go. Okay, we've done the uh, first parts of this um, question where we figured out the midpoint of A and B, we figured out the gradient of A and B, we knew that because they're parallel, the gradients would be exactly the same. So we have the gradient of CD, and then we use this point minus six and two to find the equation of the line, to find the equation of the line. Well, let's try this. Can we explain why A, B, C, D, and, and go from A to B, ooh, I, oh, to D to C? You see, you have to follow the letters. A, B, D, C. Why is that shape a parallelogram? Well, we've got one set of parallel lines right here because we know the gradients are the same and we were given that they're parallel. Well, look, these look like they're parallel. Why do we know they're parallel? Well, what we do, all we have to do is work out the gradient of, of CA. And I, I'm going to do it, I'll cheat a little bit and just do it from the graph. I can see that I go three to the left and one, two, three, four, five up. If I put these points into the gradient formula and did the gradient, I'd get negative 5 over 3. But let's try the same thing between D and B. Well, I go 3 to the left, the run is 3, and the rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the gradient for both C, um, for, for um, C, A, I should say the gradient for C, A, um, and DB are the same. Therefore, CD and DB are the same. Well, that means, hey, I got this a little bit wrong here. I just named it a little bit wrong. I'm going to clean it up quickly here. That means uh, that what's parallel, what two things, if their gradients are the same, we can say that CD, we can say that CD is Parallel, sorry, CA, I got to get the right, we're talking about the dotted lines there. CA is parallel to DB. So there we go. That's what we can say. Because DB and CD have the same gradient, I work out the gradient between both, then it means they're parallel. Well, now we can say CDBA is a parallelogram because we have opposite pairs of parallel lines. And that's one of the conditions uh, definitions for defining a, a parallelogram. Two pairs of opposite um, sides that are parallel. That makes a parallelogram. Okay, there's one more question I'd like to look at to just give it a try. What if they said this? You're supposed to determine a point F so that D, B, E, and then to F makes a parallelogram. It's somewhere up here. But where is it going to be? How can we show the, the point of F. Well, you're looking at it. You could name it off the graph. But if you didn't have this grid and you had to figure it out, this is what you do. First, you look at going from D, from, oh, sorry, from B to E. Just look at what going from B to E. Well, I'd go one down and three to the left. Now, all you do, you'll see it's only worth two marks. All you do for the two coordinates is go up to D and do the same thing. Well, go one down and three to the left. Well, do the same thing. Just go one down and three to the left, and you've got yourself one down and three to the left. You've got the point F. There it is. That's the point F. F must be, let's see where it is. F must be um, three to the left minus three and three up. There we go. There, we just figured out F, and all I had to do is look what happens on one side of the parallelogram, and now I'll use a dotted line. You can see this parallelogram now. I'll use a red dotted line. Now you can see that this really is, I used a, a solid red line. It really is a parallelogram, D-B-E-F. Um, and all I had to do was look at B and E, one down and three to the left, and just do the same thing up here, one down and three to the left. And I determined a point that will make DBEF a parallelogram. And that's the story. Now you should look at this video and like pause it, and try the thing on your own, and then play the video and look at the solution. 
Try and understand each one of these five parts and you're going to do real well in the control test on Wednesday in this section. Anyways, I hope. Okay, that's it.